Namaskar. I am grateful to all of you who have joined today to remember the 95th anniversary of the Bardoli Satyagraha, which was the nationalist movement led by Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel on 12th June 1928. This Satyagraha added in the resurgence of the freedom struggle nationwide, garnered widespread support and became an inspiration for many movements in India. I thank the Indian Mission for hosting this talk during the commemoration of the 75th anniversary of India's independence, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel's greatest contribution to India's struggle for independence was in the successful application of non-violence in various struggles he led during the freedom movement. Sardar Patel was born in a peasant home on October 31st 1876 in Nadia district in Gujarat state in India. The whole makeup of his personality was that of an Indian peasant. Practical as he was, the simple wisdom of ages was all his. He was not averse to new ideas, but once convinced of their practical utility, he would even lay down his life for it. However, he was peace-loving but would not hesitate to use force in the defense of his motherland. Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel was a leader with charismatic qualities. His commitment to India's freedom movement was true and well-defined. He had extraordinary qualities of courage, integrity, determination and a great sense of humor. He played an important role in the Indian independence movement and in free India. The qualities of leadership he had shown as the leader of Satyagraha, led by him, later manifested in a greater way in the country's administration when he became the first Deputy Prime Minister and the Home Minister of Independent India. He was responsible for handling and maintaining law and order for ensuring stability and unity of the country. Sardar Patel's legacy is associated with his negotiation skills, precision, firmness, and administrative efficiency. Equally, he stands out as the first major leader of the independence movement who came from a rural background, whose leadership in the various satyagraha and non-violent civil disobedient movements were remarkable. His inclusive approach was focused with laser-like intensity on the essentials and the goal that he had to achieve. He undertook all the actions with total dedication, with no halfway measures. From an early age, Sardar Patel showed the leadership traits of an ins inspirational leader. And they were responsibility, forthrightness, courageousness, unsparing, just, skillful in debate, and aware of his adversary's weak points. Sardar Patel possessed also the qualities of a servant leader with exemplary leadership traits. He had exceptional qualities of courage of conviction, measuring all the decisions against truth, injustice and exploitation, coupled with a strong sense of humor, transparency, total fearlessness and successfully navigating to the right choices. He excelled in the art of persuasion. He kept people's interest at heart and his organizing skills were always remained an inspiration for every Indian. Sardar Patel's clear and accurate conception of his objectives and goal played a significant role in the Indian independence movement and later on as well. He judged people instantly and had the courage to reprimand the erring. He did so judiciously, though treating everyone with the same yardstick and his helping hand reached high and low alike. In 1917, Sardar Patel entered the municipal politics of Ahmedabad. Soon after his election to the municipality, he established his authority and proved his mettle. He had an iron will to fight his way to victory. Also, his ability as a leader of steadfast courage, dedicated to public cause, and one who could outmaneuver his opponent by staying firm to facts through a medical strategy and planning were outstanding. Sardar Patel, a public-spirited young man of 42 years, 
came in direct contact with 48-year-old Mahatma Gandhi for the first time in November 1917 at the Gujarat Political Conference in Godhra. It was here that Mahatma Gandhi had made a statement of great significance when he had said, and I quote, if we are unable to run our village administration skillfully, honestly and justly, how can we justify our demand for the independence of our country? Unquote. It was Mahatma Gandhi who made Sardar Vallabhai Patel aware that farmers were central to the country. He joined Gandhiji during the Kheda Satyagraha and there he realized that the real India was in its villages and agriculture was central to the village community. Given his present origin, it was easy for him to reach out to the farmers. It became his life's mission to help farmers lead a life of dignity. And famously, he had said, and I quote, I feel ashamed when a farmer accepts suffering and thrashing of a tyrant out of fear. I desire that the farmers rid themselves of their fear with their head held high, unquote. That would give fulfillment to my life, he had said. People of Gujarat observed in him a new national leader in the making, an unrelenting crusader, an able administrator, and a skillful mediator. In the year 1917, the nation witnessed Mahatma Gandhi's victories in quick succession in Satyagraha, which made a sweeping effect on Sardar Patel's mind that was profound, far-reaching, and lifelong. It moved a mind that was resolute, analytical and governed by reason. He saw the beginning of a new agrarian uprising, which impressed him the most as he was the son of the soil. This understanding irresistibly drew Sardar Patel towards Mahatma Gandhi, his methods of nonviolent civil disobedience and Satyagraha. Thus, Sardar Patel became Mahatma Gandhi's chosen deputy commander and henceforth it was his support in planning and implementation, which was the most significant contribution to the various Satyagraha in India. In his 30 years of public life, Sardar Patel led eight Satyagraha in the Indian freedom struggle, starting from the Kheda Satyagraha in 1918, the Flag Satyagraha in Nagpur in 1923, the Bursad Satyagraha in 1923, the Bardoli Satyagraha in 1928, Ras Satyagraha in 1930, Mansa Satyagraha in 1938, Rajkot Satyagraha in 1938, and Junagar Satyagraha in 1947. His substantial contribution to the Salt Satyagraha in 1930 and in the Quit India Movement in 1942 were matchless. Sardar Patel had understood that the authority of even the most oppressive government ultimately comes from the consent of the governed. And if the people turn their backs on the authorities, it will be powerless. This Satyagraha inspired millions of Indians to actively take part in the independence struggle. Sardar Patel's most famous intervention occurred in 1928, when he led a no-tax agitation in the drought-afflicted district of Bardoli in Gujarat, where he got the title of Sardar after the success of the Pride Satyagraha of Bardoli. Sardar Patel's capacities as an organizer, speaker, persistent campaigner, inspirer of ordinary men and women were already known, which came to the fore in the Bardoli Satyagraha. Vallabhai Patel had paid close attention to the development of Bardoli district, as he was certain that someday a struggle that would have national significance would start in the area. Bardoli district was prepared for the struggle and the government presented the people and the worker with the opportunity. In 1926, government had made a land survey in the land assessment and the land assessment amounted to 30%. Thus, the villagers had to bear the burden of a twofold increase, one on account of the increased assessment and the other due to the higher assessment of the upper class. Vallabhai Patel and his associates minutely examined the matter and were satisfied that the peasants' cause of not paying the enhanced land revenue was just. As soon as Gandhiji learned that Vallabhai Patel had made up his mind, he said, and I quote, Well then, there is nothing more to be considered. 
go forward and victory to Gujarat, unquote. With these words began a partnership. Vallabhai Patel was the leader and Gandhiji his advisor. Vallabhai Patel's leadership combined the wisdom of a peasant with unique courage, forthright diplomacy and the expertise of a master tactician. Upon Mahatma Gandhi's instruction, Sardar Patel led the Satyagrahi in Bardoli that became notable because he united villages and towns, generated monetary and moral support from all over Gujarat for the farmers' agitation. He was ideally suited for leading the campaign in Bardoli. He was a leader who was loved by everyone. Some of the traits of Sardar Patel's leadership that one saw in Bardoli were his steadfastness and firmness towards the goal he had decided to achieve. He had the ability of strong and fast decision making, which one could see in all his actions during the Satyagraha. Sardar Patel was always known for his influencing ability and team building. Vallabhai Patel's leadership combined the wisdom of a peasant with unique courage, forthright diplomacy, and the expertise of a master tactician. The skill was seen in both the Kheda and Bardoli Satyagraha. By 1928, he emerged as one of the most influential leaders in Gujarat, who was second only to Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi was the greater guide to Sardar Patel, who received daily reports and gave his advice when necessary, but largely confined himself to writing in the Navjivan and Young India newspapers about the struggle as it unfolded and the entire country came to know about the Satyagraha. Sardar Patel's strategy was to establish 13 village camps in administrative blocks in Bardoli and assign the tasks to different leaders to mobilize and coordinate with peasants. The Satyagraha remained completely non-violent despite the forced capture of land by the British rulers. The main mobilization in Bardoli Satyagra was done through extensive propaganda via meetings, speeches, pamphlets, and door-to-door -door persuasion. Special emphasis was placed on the mobilization of women. Students were another special target, and they were asked to persuade their families to remain firm. Sardar Patel and his colleague also made constant efforts to see that they carried the constitutionalists and moderate leadership with them on all important issues. He copiously corresponded with the concerned officials of the British government. Sardar Patel toured around the district tirelessly and explained to people in his inimitable style the principles of Satyagraha. Thus, he gave them strength for the Satyagraha and told people to be firm, saying, and I quote, Having now gone into the water, you must learn to swim." Unquote. He reminded the people that the struggle was also a test of Mahatma Gandhiji's conviction in Satyagraha and said, and I quote, The world is talking about us. Just as the name of Lord Rama sanctifies even the stones, we have come to be associated with the name of a great man. It is our test. Unquote. He would often allude to Mahatma Gandhi and thus communicate the resolve of the Satyagrahis. Sardar Patel harnessed the creative energies of people from the Bardoli movement. The struggle drew strength from the traditional ties that bound the village communities, the methods of modern political agitation and attained symbolic victory. When the government began confiscating land, Sardar Patel told the farmers not to worry as the government could not take the land with them to England. They could sell only the confiscated goods if the government could find buyers for them. Thus, the unity among the local population was crucial for the success of the agitation. The government officers tried various ploys to destroy the unity. And Sardar Patel's heart, that well-guarded sanctum, revealed itself. He seemed to suffer physical pain on hearing that the British government had seized some peasants' land and acted at once if someone on his team was ill or injured. The Satyagraha in Bardoli changed the mood of despondence in the country, and it gave the Indians new confidence. It gave the peasants new confidence. The soldiers of this battle were about 80,000 villagers of Bardoli district. 
their leader was Sardar Vallabhai Patel. He was given the name of Sardar or the chief by a village woman named Meethi Ban during the struggle and the entire country adopted this title from then on. The residents of Bardoli to this day recall the stirring effect of the Sardar Patel's speeches which he delivered in an idiom and style that was close to the peasant's heart. Public opinion in the country was getting more and more restive and against the British government. Peasants in many parts of, Bomb of the Bombay presidency were threatening to agitate for a revision of the revenue assessment in their areas as well. I am not going to leave Bardoli, Sardar Patel had declared in June 1928. The decision to tie his future to Bardoli was a timely boost to the peasants' morale. Material support from all over the country too was beginning to reach the people of Bardoli. Sardar Patel founded an ashram in Bardoli in 1928. It was named as Swaraj Ashram. The ashram became a center for all Satyagrahis. It was then that the term Bardolize India resounded across the country and reached even the power corridors of Westminster in London. When Mahatma Gandhi came to Bardoli, he would live in the Swaraj Ashram on the first floor of Sardar Nivas and discuss matters of serious national consequences. But there was humor too. Gandhiji had stayed here for four times during 1928 to 1942. During the famous Salt Satyagraha, which had commenced on 12th March 1930, Gandhiji had pledged not to return to the Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad until India gained freedom. At that time, Sardar Patel had offered that Gandhiji could come and stay in the Swaraj Ashram and it also became the center for several political meetings. As the Bardoli Satyagraha progressed, the fear from the minds of people vanished. Especially commendable was the role of women. An old couple lived in a village called Sarbon. The government felt that the best way to coerce this couple was to put their house under siege. Armed policemen were posted in front of their house, while Pathans guarded the back door. The house was under siege since 2.30 a.m. When Sardar Vallabhai Patel and his associate Mahadev Desai visited their home, the old man's wife was sitting at a window on the first story of the house, rosary in hand, and was repeating Lord Rama's name. I hope, old mother, you are not afraid, asked Sardar Patel from outside her home. Why should I be afraid when you are there to protect us, the old mother said. Not I, but Lord Rama, said the Sardar, correcting. Indeed, Lord Ramji is merciful, she said, nodding in assent. But how do you like these policemen at your door? asked the Sardar. The old mother was quick to say, they are quite welcome. But for them, the Sardar would not have graced my house. Long live the Sardar to fight many a good fight, said Mahatma Gandhi, adopting the peasant's appellation in a letter. Mahadev Desai, Gandhiji's secretary, wrote that Sardar Patel had in him the blood of a generation of peasants and could organize the Bardoli populace in a form in which Gandhiji never could have done. Unlike Mahatma Gandhi, Sardar Patel spoke the language of the soil and as a partidar, he belonged to the community that comprised the Satyagraha's backbone. After four grueling months of extreme hardship borne stoically by the villagers, the face-saving device was provided by the Legislative Council members from Surat district in Gujarat who wrote a letter to the governor assuring him that his precondition for an inquiry would be satisfied. The obstacles to a settlement were removed on August 6, 1928, following long talks in Pune between Sardar Vallabhai Patel and Sir Chunilal Mehta, finance member of the Bombay government, who negotiated on behalf of the governor. The government annulled its threat made earlier and agreed that the sold lands would be bought back and returned to the peasants. The agreement was carried out with the dispatch. Prisoners were at once let, out, let off. The village headsmen were reinstated and they issued orders to restore forfeited lands. In a private reprisal, Leslie Wilson, the governor, admitted the government had no effective weapon for dealing with Satyagraha. 
Vallabh Bhai Patel of April 1928 had become the Sardar in June and the triumphant general in August 1928. His soldiers, the peasants had not given in. They had not hit back and the government had yielded. Gandhiji's dream was to make Bardoli the perfect example of Satyagraha. Bardoli has fulfilled itself in its own fashion, interpreting and perfecting Gandhiji's dream by Sardar Patel, she had said. The outcome of the Satyagraha in Bardoli contributed to the growth of its philosophy and established Satyagraha as a practice. The Satyagraha had commenced with a limited scope and a specific demand, but the struggle had nationwide ramifications and was successful in creating the mood for complete independence. Bardoli Satyagraha transformed the mood of despondence in the country and it gave the Indian Indians fresh determination. It gave the peasants new confidence. The soldiers of this Satyagraha were about 80,000 villagers of Bardoli district. Mahadev Desai, the associate of Sardar Patel, wrote the story of Bardoli Satyagraha and I quote, He is ever on the move without haste and without rest. His iron discipline ever so unrelaxed, paying the penalty of exclusive prerogative speech making often at midnight and often at three or four places in a day." Unquote. Indian Nobel laureate Rabindna Tagore wrote after reading the story of Bardoli Satyagraha and I quote, I have finished your story of Bardoli. It has the spirit of the epic age in the narrative of the triumph of moral right over arbitrary power through a fight, moral in character, unique in modern times. I thank you and the leader of the fight and the fighters. Also, your great guide, my blessings." Unquote. During the Bardoli Satyagraha, we can see Sardar Patel's decisive and straightforward leadership that combined the wisdom of a peasant, his unique courage, forthright diplomacy, and the expertise of the master tactician. Mahatma Gandhi offered his years of expertise, his philosophy of Satyagraha, and the charisma that attracted the attention of the world. The Satyagraha remained thoroughly non-violent despite the forced confiscation of land by the British government. No detail was too unimportant or sordid for Boss Patel, wrote the Time magazine in 1947. In the post-independent India, Sardar Patel emerged as an astute leader and an insightful statesman acknowledged as the Iron Man and a founder of modern India. As a nation builder, Sardar Patel's unrelenting efforts towards the unity of the country brought success. A man of iron will and absolute fearlessness, Sardar Patel integrated Indian princely states into the Indian Union. He is one of the prestigious leaders of the world who became immortal by uniting a scattered nation without any bloodshed. He took over as the nascent nation's deputy prime minister and the Home Minister at a very crucial juncture in history and devoted himself wholeheartedly to ensure that the country, which was already partitioned, remained intact and united. The impact of Mahatma Gandhi's personality on Sardar Patel was tremendous, which gave him a new mission in life. The Bardoli Satyagraha was a turning point in the Indian independence struggle and as Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, who was the most prominent leader of the Indian freedom struggle, prejudged that it was a precursor to a larger battle that Mahatma Gandhi would wage. To honor Sardar Patel, a 182-meter-tall colossal statue of Sardar Vallabhai Patel, billed as the world's tallest, was built in Gujarat, and National Unity Day is celebrated in India on 31st October to mark the birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel. Sardar Patel's life is an inspiration for everyone and the nation remembers his tremendous selfless contribution gratefully during the celebration of 75th anniversary of India's independence. I once again take this opportunity to thank the Indian Mission for hosting the talk. My special thanks are to all of you who have joined me online today.
नमस्कार